let's talk about B-cell maturation antigen. BCMA is a cell surface protein that is expressed on multiple myeloma cells. BCMA is essential for the proliferation and survival of multiple myeloma cells. BCMA is a target under investigation because BCMA is present in 100% of multiple myeloma patients. Just goes to show, some facts are more meaningful. The CANDER study was a randomized phase three trial in the one to three prior lines of treatment relapse refractory myeloma patient population. And the randomization was between the standard of care arm of carfilzomib dexamethasone to the experimental arm of carfilzomib daratumumab and dexamethasone. And the randomization was a two to one schema, which means that for every patient that gets randomized to KD, two were randomized to DARA KD. Uh, there were a total of 466 patients randomized with the median prior lines of two treatments. And the median age on the study was about 65. 90% of the patients had exposure to bortezomib, 42% had uh, exposure to lenalidomide, and 33% were refractory to lenalidomide. So the, after a median follow-up of 17 months, the study reached its primary endpoint, which was PFS benefit. The KD arm had a PFS of 15.8 months, whereas the DARA KD arm, uh, the median PFS was not reached. The hazard ratio was 0.63. The overall response rate was 84% versus 73%. The MRD CR negativity rate at 12 months was 12.5% versus 1.3%. So essentially 10 times more um, than the standard of care arm. The median overall survival was not different between the two arms at the 17-month follow-up period. As expected, we did see a higher incidence of infections um, and overall AEs in the three-drug combination compared to the two-drug combination. Um, but what was interesting uh, was that there were lower incidence of cardiac failure or cardiac events in the three-drug combination compared to the two-drug combination. And why is that important? It's important because we do see an incidence of cardiovascular events with carfilzomib, and, and we don't know how to explain this, uh, but there appears to be some sort of a cardioprotective uh, effect. Uh, so we're looking at clinical characteristics from that standpoint. Uh, although there were no differences in the overall survival difference, the fatal treatment aversion events were five on the experimental arm compared to zero on the standard of care arm. And four of the five of those events were infection related. So we are also looking into that specific data and tease out if we can create an algorithm to identify patients at risk for infections and potentially even prophylax them if needed. I think that the whole patient population that was examined in this study benefited in terms of pre-specified subgroup analysis. Um, the LEN-exposed, LEN-refractory patients especially uh, also had a benefit, so that's one practical uh, uh, perspective that you have to look at because the uh, majority of patients in the U.S. were receiving LEN maintenance. When they're relapsing off of LEN, we have relatively limited options for those patients. So that would be the other uh, group of patients. Uh, the one patient group that I would probably be a little careful of is the older, frail patients or patients who, have, um, who are at risk for recurrent infections. 